Howdy, I'm Bob Terry. Welcome to Forsaken Westerns. Up next, from 1956, we have an episode out of a almost completely lost and almost completely forgotten anthology series. It's amazing this episode still exists. There are a few actors that, even though they've done diverse roles, just the mention of their name makes you think about the westerns they've done. Like John Wayne, Audie Murphy, Randolph Scott, Gary Cooper. We have such an actor in this episode. Our stars in this episode are John Howard, Richard Gaines, Rhodes Reason, and the very first appearance by Clint Eastwood in a western as Lieutenant Wilson. The title of this episode is Cochise, the Greatest of the Apaches. Sit back, relax, kick your boots up, and enjoy this. We'll see you after the show. expansion and development still smoldered in the far west. Most valiant in the defense of his rights was Cochise, an Apache chief of the Chiricahuas. When commander after commander had failed to bring him to heel, Ulysses S. Grant, then president of the United States, determined to put an end to these bloody wars. He dispatched General Oliver Otis Howard, a Civil War hero, founder of Howard University, to seek out Tom Jeffords, the only white man Cochise admitted to his presence. General Howard arrived at Fort Buchanan, near Tucson, in the early autumn of 72. Come in. Mr. Jeffords is here, sir. Would you like to see him? Yes, bring him in at once, Captain. Well, it was very good of you to come to see me so promptly, Mr. Jeffords. Did I have a choice? Of course. You're not under arrest. Please, sit down. I want your help, Mr. Jeffords. General, if you've come here to make war on Cochise, you might as well know now that you'll never get any help from me. I came here to make peace with Cochise. Peace? On whose terms? His or yours? Fair terms, Mr. Jeffords. Fair terms to both of us. Of course, it's just barely possible that you personally do not desire peace. That for you, a state of war is preferable. Though well, you've been hearing stories about me and Cochise, have you? According to one, you were on a stagecoach leaving Tucson. It was captured by Apaches. The driver and all the other passengers were killed. But not you. That's true. They tell of a number of other occasions when you've fallen into the hands of the Apaches. Sometimes in the company of other white men. Always. You are the only one who has escaped. That's true, too. They say you sell the Indians whiskey and ammunition. That's a lie. But the reason the Apaches never kill you is that you bought them up. And that's the biggest lie of all. And why is it that you alone have been spared by this bloodthirsty savage? Bloodthirsty savage? You don't consider him a bloodthirsty savage? I consider him a... If the army had kept faith, hadn't betrayed and double-crossed him, had only understood... Have you any idea how this war began, General? Yes, I've read the reports. 
Coach, he started it after kidnapping a half-breed child named Mickey Free. The war was started by one of your own soldiers. A 22-year-old second lieutenant, fresh from West Point. Before that, Cochise was the best friend Arizona Territory had. You should have seen it then. Filling up with settlers. Mining booming. Ranches prosperous. And the Chiricahua Apaches, giving it all their blessings. Pointing out their precious water holes. Hauling firewood. Serving as scouts. All because Cochise told them to be friendly. Then your Lieutenant Bascom took a hand in the game. He had nothing to go on but suspicion. But he took his troops into the Dragoon Mountains and sent out an invitation to Cochise to come and powwow with him. So you're the great Cochise, huh? Can you understand English? I speak your language. Good. And we don't have to beat around the bush. Where's the boy? Of what boy do you ask? Mickey Free, the boy who was kidnapped. Let me tell you. If any harm comes to him, I'll take it out of your hides. Every one of you. My people have kidnapped no one. You are mistaken. The boy's father says it was a Chiricahua warrior who took the child. They were not Chiricahua. We are at peace with the white man. Did the boy's father see who took his son? Don't be impertinent. Are you questioning the word of a white man? I have often helped the white man. I'd be glad to do so again. I send warriors to the other Apache tribes. If the child is with one of them... You're a lying Indian! You can't pull the wool over my eyes. You know where that boy is, all right? It's high time we taught you beggars who's boss around here. I'm putting you under arrest. You understand? I'm holding you as hostages until the child is returned. If anything happens to that boy, I'll shoot you all down! You and your family and any other Indian I can lay my hands on. I'm no prisoner of yours. Follow me. Guards, after him. Put them under arrest. He got away. You deliberately let him get away. Of course not, sir. One of the men got him with a bayonet in the leg. He managed to escape from the bush before we could stop him. Then take a squad and follow him. If we couldn't catch Cochise. We'd be killed before we got a mile away from here. You'll find him all right. Because if he isn't back here in 24 hours, with the kidnapped boy, I'll hang his whole family. That's the kind of spoiled brat the army that kick around a man like Cochise. Unfortunate. Unfortunate? It was tragic. The report said that Cochise took white hostages in retaliation. The report? He captured the soldiers sent after him and held them in exchange for his family. He was sure that Bascom would come to his senses. Boy soldiers new to this country. Some of the older warriors will soon instill wisdom in him. I cannot agree. Cochise is misled by his desire for peace. We shall have no peace until we destroy the white soldiers. By force, we shall never have peace. There is no peace in war. Where are they? Where are my chiefs who went to council with the white soldiers? Where are they? Speak. Dead. All dead. The white soldier fire on them as they fled from the meeting place. My family. My brothers. 
the child dead also, hanged by the neck. And these are the men with whom you would talk peace, O Cochise? Peace with white savages? And let there be war. War to the end. For every one of my people will be slain. Ten. Yes, a hundred of the enemy shall die. None will be spared in this war. The next ten years were bloody ones. Cochise so kept his word. And no white man was ever safe in these territories again. Does he expect to find justice and violence? That's a funny thing for a soldier to say, General. Isn't war the way to justice? I am a soldier who does not believe in war. A battle never settled anything except which side was the strongest. I have heard Cochise say the same thing, General. How did you earn his trust, Mr. Jeffrey? By trusting in him, General. It began when I got the job of supervising the mail run out of Tucson. I didn't know how dangerous a job it was. Sixteen of my boys were killed the first few weeks. Sixteen? By that time, I'd been studying how to speak Apache. Not just the language, but the customs and the manners. It occurred to me that maybe Cochise was human. That I might reason with him. So I gambled. Cochise. Oh, I have come a long way to see you. You see me? You think now you leave here alive? Yes. Why? Because I have come unarmed, openly. Trusting in your fairness. Speak. I would speak of the men who work for me. Carrying the white man's messages. These messages are not signals in the war against Apaches. Such messages are carried by the military in special ways. The men who work for me make their living bringing the messages back and forth. They do not seek trouble. They do not cause trouble. I... I ask you to spare their lives. There are Indians who caused your people no harm. They were hunted like animals and killed. Did the white men try to find which Indians are good, which are bad? No. You ask me to be better than the white men? Can an Indian be greater than a white man? Any man can be great, Cochise. If in his heart he is great. It is well said. What you say comes from the heart, not from the mouth. What trick you up to? A white man who talks of equality with an Indian has mischief in him. Is it to spy on us? Speak the truth! Death when we take your life will be swift and without torture. I speak the truth. When I say I come to you as a friend, to meet a friend. You never killed an Indian? Never. Never wished to? Never. Not even now? When they stand around you ready to take your life? Not even now. Take this knife. Now you have a chance to kill your enemy. Plunge a knife into my heart. Your death is already ordered and you have nothing to lose. Plunge it into my heart. Be avenged as you die. Not you, Cochise. 
But I will die, and in doing so, you will be convinced that my words are true, and that they come from my heart, and not my mouth. Enough. I am convinced. We are friends. Over the years, our friendship grew. And then one night, we became blood brothers. Was it a trick? Did you merely succeed in not bluffing him? It was no trick. I meant it. And he knew I meant it. I can well understand how Cochise regards you as a friend. I, too, would like to think of you as a friend. And as a friend, I ask you to make it possible for me to meet with Cochise. That will not be easy. I'm the only white man with whom Cochise will speak. I have promised never to betray his confidence in me by bringing another to him. I merely ask that you convey to Cochise my great desire to discuss as equals the problem which keeps our two nations from enjoying peace. Two nations, General? Not an inferior race being dictated to by a superior race? I use the word equals. I do not regard the Indians as an inferior race or an inferior nation. They are people with rights that must be respected. General, I will try. I cannot promise success, but I will try. Because like you, I long to see peace brought again to this land these people, and to Cochise. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Perhaps we could arrange to meet on neutral territory. I will do my best to arrange it. My brother, I will not go to meet the American general. And it does not do well for you that you ask me. I break my word, because I believe that from this meeting some good may come. I do not doubt your intentions. I doubt your wisdom. Because of this meeting, we again should be betrayed. My people would demand your life. Then I will risk my life for what I believe may be an open door to everlasting peace between your people and mine. Again, the night turned at your own heart. You are careless with your life, my brother. I believe in this meeting. And I believe in you and General Howard. I believe that between you there is a common ground of agreement. I will see him. But he must come here to me. Will you promise him safe conduct? I promise nothing. Unless they are prevented. Your warriors will ambush him and strike him down before he gets here. He is a great soldier, you tell me. A great soldier cannot expect to win a battle without danger. Let your general begin the fight by exposing himself. I will await him. He dare come at all. But it's suicidal, General. I am definitely opposed to your taking this journey. I agree with Captain Slade, sir. Nothing would suit the Indians more than to take you prisoner. If anything happens to you, sir, you shall hold us all responsible. I've already written an official report to Washington, explaining what I'm doing and freeing you of responsibility. It's not official responsibility that concerns me. I'm worried for your life, General. Let me attend you with a military escort. That would only guarantee trouble. Agreed. The only way I can convince Kachis of my sincerity is to accept his challenge. Regardless of the risk that it entails. Sir, you're imputing motives that Kochis doesn't even understand. Why, he's nothing but a bloodthirsty savage. It may be something of a shock to you, Lieutenant, to learn that Cochise thinks exactly the same about you. I beg you. You're throwing your life away on a useless errand. Whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. We 
we set out straight into the Dragoon Mountains, the stronghold which no American officer had previously dared approach. You are a brave man, General. Not many white soldiers would dare enter into my country, alone and unguarded. So I have been told. You, too, would have been captured and put to death long before you reached me. You had not been accompanied by my blood brother, my good friend. It was his presence that led me to believe I should make the journey safely. You are wise. Of what do you wish to speak to me? Of peace. Peace? That is a strange word to us. There has been no peace for many years. Amongst my people, there are those who cannot remember peace. By peace, do you mean slavery? Lies? Injustice? By peace, I mean the love that exists between brothers. Brothers who understand each other, believe in each other, and honor each other. Peace? On what terms? I would like to persuade you to bring your people to a fertile land on the Rio Grande. No! My people will never be shut up away on some small reservation. We'll go wherever it suits us. We are a free people! We will not go to the Rio Grande. We stay on our hunting grounds we've always known. Here! From the Dragoon Mountains up to here. In the Chiricahua Mountains. And here. The Pilanchillo Mountains and then all the way down to here. That will be the reservation of the Chiricahua Apaches. That's impossible. I will never get my government to consent to anything so extensive. Peace talk is ended. These terms are unprecedented. However, I will think them over and return. I promised you nothing. That you came here. If you wish now, I will come to you. You will find me at Fort Buchanan. I will leave orders that you'll be allowed to approach unharmed. I will come to you there. I have considered your peace terms, Cochise. They are harsh. Far in excess of what my government had expected. Tell your government, my people prefer to die rather than accept less than what they deserve. No people deserve less than freedom, and the right to live in equality with their neighbors. This is a Christian principle, stronger than the rights of government or the whims of its leaders. There can be no peace on earth with bad will toward men. Peace goes hand in hand with good will. On what terms? Conditions and goodwill be bought. That we shall have peace on no terms and no conditions. That we shall have peace because there is peace in our hearts and because we desire peace. Let there be no bargaining, no contracts. Take for your people what they need. Let them live as it becomes a free people to live. And in return, let us live as it becomes a free people to live. Without fear. Free of the oppression of war. That's a magnanimous statement, General. Will Grant back it up? I give you my word that he will. I accept your word. Because I know that your word is not a light thing. And I accept the peace you offer. Because you have spoken things which I had never expected to hear from the lips of any man. It is true what you have said. Peace cannot be had by guns or by treaties. Peace can come only out of the hearts of men when they truly desire peace from this moment. Your people may walk amongst mine as brothers, and we in turn shall walk amongst yours as brothers. Let there be an end to fighting.
last time, I had to cut my way out of a tent. This time, I shall walk through the door. Well done, General. Well done. Well done, Mr. Jeffords. There's a lot of truth in this episode. The Spanish and the Mexican settlements had a lot of trouble with the Apaches dating back to the 1600s. But in 1850, the United States acquired the territory, and a peace was developed between the settlers and the Apaches. In fact, the Apaches are said to have supplied firewood to the Butterfield Stage Station at Apache Pass. But then the wicked things that are shown in this episode happened in 1861, starting with the Coyotero Apaches, who were actually the ones who kidnapped the boy and stole the cattle. And then George Bascom, accusing and convicting the innocent. It's strange how the wicked actions of a few individuals can set two ethnicities completely against each other. And thank God for good men of all races that are willing to use their wisdom and risk their lives to establish peace. My name's Bob Terry. Thank you for joining us for the Forsaken Westerns. We hope you'll join us again here next time. Have a great day.